packets. Thousands of new reservists to swell the ranks of America's rapidly growing Navy and Merchant Marine. Aquatic instruction is all a part of the training to keep a good sailor man afloat. Physical exercise, building strong, healthy bodies. Men to carry on the glorious tradition of the United States Navy. In summer whites, the school salutes men who have been promoted from the ranks. Impressive reservoir of fighting men to man the fighting ships of the United Nations. Surf bathing in Australia is quite a sport. It takes a hardy athlete to ride these waves. Coming in on breakers at top speed, they handle their rubber surfboards with remarkable skill. To win this aquatic contest, you have to ride the big ones, like this. Final chapter in the United Nations drive to seal the doom of the Axis in North Africa. Americans of the 2nd Army Corps on the road to Bizerk. Armored brigades clearing a path for the infantry. bloody 10-day battle for the approaches to the city. Allied tank commanders await orders to advance. Wrecked German panzers are strewn like mileposts along the road of retreat. General Eisenhower, Allied commander-in-chief, inspects samples of Nazi ingenuity. Cunning booby traps designed to explode in the hands of unsuspecting soldiers. On the American right flank, the British 8th Army blasting their way to Tunis. Town after town falls to the Allies. Eagerly, a liberated people destroy all reminders of the Nazi occupation. General Sir Bernard Montgomery, leader of the gallant 8th Army, is the man of the hour. In the north, the tanks roll on. Desperately, the crippled Luftwaffe seeks to stem the drive. But one after another, the once invincible Nazi warplanes are shot to earth in flames. Lake Bizerk, U.S. artillery reduces the Nazi-held naval base. Six months before, that American infantryman was just landing in Africa. Now, with the help of fighting French and British allies, the advance guard of United States forces enters the outskirts of Bizerre. They move cautiously and rapidly, for enemy snipers still lurk amid the ruins. Machine gun nests are wiped out by tank fire.
Street by street, they search the city, surprised to find no signs of the expected Nazi resistance. German's great African war machine collapses. Nazi soldiers driving their own trucks and bringing all their equipment surrender without a fight. Thirteen Nazi generals are captured in the roundup. Prisoners flock to the rear by companies, by regiments, by entire divisions. In all, more than 175,000 surrendered to the Allies in five days. Well clothed, well equipped, and seemingly well fed, the Nazis simply threw down their weapons and threw up their hands. entry into Bizerte. Hysterically happy crowds hail the British, the French, the Americans as liberators. The faces of the people tell their own stories more eloquently than words. of jubilation that are being repeated throughout all Tunisia. Springboard to the continent. The banners of the United Nations replace the swastika over North Africa. In Washington, President Roosevelt and Prime Minister Churchill meet with the Pacific War Council to decide when and where the Allies will next strike. An imposing array of military headgear signifies that the war chiefs are in conference. Here, the Allied High Command with General Marshall, United States Chief of Staff, plans the strategy of global war. On the White House lawn, the joint command, British and American. Churchill, Lion of Britain. Roosevelt, Man of Destiny. Their terms to the Axis, unconditional surrender.